Make sure you go out and vote if you haven't already. I'll be voting for the really controversial candidate that half of you thinks is going to bring about the downfall of Western civilization. Anyway, let's do this shit. As the landscape of fast food fried chicken has widened over the years, KFC has become a bit of a joke to most people, as the once proud kings of the fried bird have sunk to nothing more than a punchline in the pantheon of fast food. Now, I don't have a dog in that fight. I vaguely remember KFC once as a kid, and it didn't make that much of an impression on me. But going in, I was curious to see whether this was just the younger generation being contrarian, or if KFC really was utter trash compared to its competitors. So I ordered the family meal with four sides and four biscuits, and I can now confidently say that KFC is a 100% uncut absolute garbage dog shit disgrace to fried chicken. The leg and thigh were almost passable, but the wing and breast were damn near inedible. I would venture that this chicken was fried up at least an hour before I ordered, if not longer. It was dead, fam. And this wasn't a meal that could be rescued by the sides, either. The mashed potatoes and mac and cheese were about the same quality you would get from a banquet microwavable packet. So you could literally eat just as well from the Dollar General. And amazingly, we still haven't hit rock bottom yet. Buttermilk biscuits are like a cheat code for restaurants. Beloved by damn near everyone and extremely forgiving. They're an easy way to please customers. KFC biscuits are terrible in a way I didn't even know was possible. They tasted like stale, butter-flavored, hydrogenated oil and sadness. Yet amazingly, this won't be the worst biscuit in this video. But I hand to God went into this meal wanting to prove the youth wrong. I wanted KFC to impress me, but consuming this food, I felt sad. Like I had done something terribly wrong and was punished by being forced to eat old chicken, sorry ass potatoes, and biscuits that were worse than I thought biscuits could even be. A high 1 out of 10. Absolute trash. Took a well-deserved break from the many local Mexican spots, but I'm back on that horse, no pun intended, by trying Antojitos Mexicanos Tu Hermanos. Are you fucking serious with that name? What even is that? Why is the number two in there? Anyway, AM2H is a Mexican food truck, and they were pretty legit. Their specialty appears to be burrito tacos, and veering off on a side rant, I recently learned that those cheesy burrito tacos that everyone has been going apeshit for are nothing more than an L.A. food trend. So if you ever hear some hipster dildo mouthing off about real Mexican, after you club them in the face with a tire iron, you can inform them or their loved ones that those trendy tacos they love so much are about as close to authentic as Taco Bell. Anyway, I still refuse to eat tacos, so I got the barbacoa beef torta, and it was alright. And by alright, I mean the beef actually tasted like beef and not a cut of meat that's been cooked down into flavorless nothingness. Also, a lot of Mexican places that sell tortas don't use high quality bread, but this was nice and fresh and well made. In the complaints department, the menu said that this came with cheddar cheese, and unfortunately for Antojitos, I know what a craft single looks like. Also, it wasn't even melted, and this is my biggest problem with the torta as a sandwich. It's always lukewarm, no matter how freshly it's been made. Sandwiches, in my opinion, should always either be hot or cold, but most tortas seem to be neither. If they toasted or even grilled this sandwich, it would be top tier, but for what it is, Entejitos Mexicanos Two Hermanos is a high-ish 6 out of 10. Normally a fast food chain doesn't get a second review, but apparently Whataburger is known for their late night slash breakfast menu, which is only available between the hours of 11 p.m. and 11 a.m. Specifically, they are known for their honey butter chicken biscuit. Well, Mrs. Raid and I woke up one Sunday morning feeling peckish and decided to give it a crack. Alright, bitch, so I got a sausage egg and cheese biscuit with a jalapeno cheddar biscuit and some hash browns and one of the aforementionedly famous honey butter chicken biscuits. Now listen to me, SHIT! Everyone loves a breakfast hash brown, right? Whether it's the famed and acclaimed McDonald's hash brown or the little disc tater tot style. What a burger said fuck that and rolled out these hash brown logs for some reason. And that might be fine, but these weren't seasoned at all, so they were trash. And really, you can call it a day for this review because the rest is just more of the same. The sausage egg and cheese doesn't taste like sausage, egg, or cheese because nothing is seasoned. And the biscuit is, honest to God, one of the worst fast food biscuits I've ever fucking seen. A real deal Holyfield biscuit has an extremely flaky and delicate structure because 
of the unusually high butter content in the dough. This biscuit didn't have that, didn't taste like butter, didn't taste like the dough because it didn't have any salt. An utter disgrace. And the famed and fabled honey butter chicken biscuit? It fucking sucks. The chicken wasn't seasoned, this biscuit didn't taste like butter either, and the honey butter didn't taste like butter. Probably because it's mostly soybean oil. It's sweet, that's it. No depth. Definitely not worthy of any hype. And for the price, just straight up not worth it. In the pantheon of fast food, Whataburger is better than many of its competitors for several things, but for breakfast, they are close to the bottom. If you can't take biscuits serious enough to produce one that at least tastes like a biscuit, get fucked, bitch ass. 3 out of 10. Actually, let me verify something. Yeah, I got a Hardee's breakfast purely out of spite, and it was several leagues better than Whataburger. Also, I guess I'll treat fast food breakfast separately from now on. Do I think Hardee's is baking biscuits fresh every day from a biscuit dough that gets made in-house? No, but there is at least some semblance of effort here. It tastes like butter, the eggs taste like eggs, and the bacon tastes like bacon. 7 out of 10, the upper echelon of fast food breakfast. <laughs> Okay, strap yourself in. This is a wild ride. I tried Shorty's Barbecue, and you may be thinking, oh, barbecue, ribs, brisket, you know, a barbecue restaurant. Well, Shorty's Barbecue isn't a barbecue restaurant. It's... I don't know what it is. They specialize in burgers and fries, and the closest comparison I can think of is Cookout. In fact, their menus are basically identical. Anyway, they were on the list, so I went to check them out, and as I was pulling up, I saw a girl come outside to hand somebody their order. So I followed her back inside and found myself standing in their kitchen. It was awkward, and I immediately left and found the correct entrance, but in the few seconds I was in there, uh, I kinda looked like someone's incredibly messy garage. I'm not implying it was dirty or unsanitary. Just picture the kitchen of a restaurant owned and operated by a hoarder. That's what it was like. Anyway, I got my bearings straight and ordered a bacon cheeseburger with onion rings, curly fries, and a barbecue pork sandwich. Now let's backtrack to the curly fries because they call them pig wiggles for some reason. I have a BA in English and always found etymology, or the history of language, to be quite fascinating. But despite my research, I can find no reference to anyone anywhere calling curly fries pig wiggles. Neither the word nor the expression show up anywhere in the Oxford English Dictionary as having been used at any point by anyone. So Shorty's is entirely in uncharted territory with their pig wiggles. But that's not the only odd thing about Shorty's, because Shorty's doesn't accept credit cards. And they aren't cash only either, because to add an additional layer of strangeness, they do accept checks. Now look, plenty of small businesses and even traveling vendors are set up to accept credit card payment with as little as a tablet or phone app. It's Shorty's business and it's their right not to do that for whatever reason they want. But why accept checks? That's literally the same exact process of transporting invisible funds from one bank account to another. Only with checks you have no way of verifying whether or not they have the money to cover it. It's baffling. But we're here to talk food and not the pros and cons of a cashless society. And the food was pretty good and fairly priced. The burgers are mighty fine, which says a lot considering how many burgers are to be had here. But the real star of the show was surprisingly the barbecue pork sandwich. This was some of the best barbecue pork I've had in I don't know how long. Definitely worth a visit just for that. A very high 6 out of 10. <laughs> What I really hate about this job that no one asked me to do and to which I appointed myself is shit like this. I don't want to be like this. It's all fun and games when you're dunking on some multinational corporation or local chain, but when you have to take a baseball bat with rusty nails pounded into it to some locals that are just trying to do their best, it's no fun. But I have to, because Double D's Express is fucking terrible. I mean, it's just fucking terrible. I've adopted the practice of ordering whatever the most popular item is, which means I got a fried catfish platter with macaroni and cheese. And normally, this would be the point in the review where I point out something good before telling you what wasn't. But Double D's wouldn't even allow me that. The fried catfish was so bland and so under-seasoned that it honestly felt like a personal attack on me. Like, how could anybody make fried catfish, a food that's usually so delicious, so unappealing? 
and the shit kicker was that it didn't even come with anything to dip it in. I had to double check and if you want something to dip your fish in, you know, like what people do with catfish, it costs extra. Like what the fuck my guy, do you want people to have as shit an experience with your food as humanly possible? Do you want some wannabe YouTube astrotard telling everyone how shit your shit is? And macaroni and cheese, what the fuck? It tastes like Velveeta and sad. Don't even try making shit like that if you aren't going to try. Fries? Unseasoned, like everything else, and undercooked to boot. This was genuinely one of the worst meals I can remember. Like prison bad. Like the kind of bad I imagine in one of those old folks homes that investigative journalists used to put hidden cameras in. The only advice I can offer is just give up. Go ask Uncle Tim how to properly cook everything on your menu because this is some shameful shit. 2 out of 10. That's it for this go-around. Make sure you like and subscribe. When I hit 1,500 subs, I'm going to go to Long John Silver's and probably get diarrhea. Catch you in the next one, and I'll see you when I see you.